Blessings unto you, brothers and sisters. Blessings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. So I've been um, just been working a lot. Um, I got this, was blessed with this new job. The Lord has opened up uh, some new doors before me and I I was I've been taken out of um one season now and into a a new season and it's all the word of the Lord um being fulfilled because this is a time for all things written to be fulfilled like our Lord and Savior Yeshua HaMashiach uh Jesus Christ told us and brothers and sisters I want to say something to you that I really pray with all my heart that people comprehend this and that the enemy doesn't come behind and try to uproot and lie and kill and steal and destroy what the Lord is doing and what the Holy Spirit is saying through this message. And that is that you and me and all of our other brothers and sisters, the true brothers and sisters, remember the Lord said that those who are appointed unto salvation, that it's a small number of people, right? It's a small group of people um, because of the decisions that people make. But remember, brothers and sisters, that if you are a true child of God, that you were chosen you were picked and chosen to live here in this moment at this time, all, all of since the creation of Adam and Eve, you and me and our other brothers and sisters, all these people were chosen and, um, and picked to be here at these end days. And the Lord did not put you here ill-equipped. He has given us everything. He has given us everything that we need. And the thing that we are fighting against, brothers and sisters, is the way that we've grown up into this system, in this society, has made us lazy. They, it, has, it used to deceive us and all these things. And so it is a battle. Um, it, it takes work and effort and it, it, is, it is a battle and one must have faith and belief to come out of these things. And it's not just an easy breezy process. Um, but brothers and sisters, the Lord has given us everything that we need. And so remember that. And he has also given us the most mighty sacrifice that the ever that ever will be in all of creation in and for eternity, the sacrifice of the blameless, spotless, blemishless lamb, the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, that in his sinless life, death, and burial, resurrection, and ascension into glory, we have access through faith, through our belief to this most mighty and glorious power that we can be raised up on the last day, that we would have all power over the powers of the enemy. But there is a battle, brothers and sisters, and this message that I'm going to um, tell people today, this is of the Holy Spirit, brothers and sisters, and this is true. And I know that the Holy Spirit will convict people and let people know that this is that this really is true, brothers and sisters. This is not from me. This is from the Holy Spirit to share with the world and and to bring this message. And I'm not the only one um, that has been given this. I'm I'm going to be saying some things, brothers and sisters, that is not easy to hear. It's not easy. Um, but if you have trouble with understanding or hearing this, brothers and sisters, if you take it to the Lord, if you take it to our Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, in faith, He will reveal these things to you. And so, um, I'm going to get right into this now, brothers and sisters. So, hold on just a second. Okay, brothers and sisters, so where we're at in this moment of time, brothers and sisters, is that the kingdom of Christ 
is growing and is being made manifest, brothers and sisters. And I want to share with you something that the Lord has been revealing to me. And I know that he's probably been revealing to you and other brothers and sisters because um, it's all of the same spirit. And that is, brothers and sisters, that one of the mightiest things that we can, that we are commanded, that we should, that we should want to be doing right now is advancing and growing the kingdom of Christ for the glorification of God. And so that the kingdom is, is made manifest and that it grows. And one of the mightiest ways to do that, brothers and sisters, is by, is by giving, When it says, it says in the word of God that the Lord loves a cheerful giver and brothers and sisters, we are commanded to, um, as children of God, to take care of the orphan, take care of the widow, to take care of the homeless, to take care of those who are in need, to take care of the elderly, to take care of those who are in jail and prison. We are commanded to do these things, brothers and sisters. And, um, you know, you can do this um, by many different ways, you know, like, for instance, um, you know, me right now, I can't, um, which is going to change here in the next couple of weeks, because glory to God, the Lord has made a way for me um, to, uh, to get a, a new updated ID. That's a, a, sto- uh, a an explanation in itself. Um, I won't go into now, but um, there are certain things like transportation and identification, um, worldly identification issues that I've had that have prohibited me from being able to go into like um, jails to minister, you know, and to to go help people to shine light and to give them hope and and to to do the things that we're commanded to. But in the spirit I have been praying and sowing in the spirit that the everlasting gospel be preached and decreed in every jail and every prison in all four corners of the earth, that the message of the gospel and and that that all of the spirits and powers of shame, guilt and condemnation operating in people in jails and prisons who are in prison and, and so on and so forth would be bound and driven into the abyss and that it would be revealed to them that the Lord loves them, that he has not forsaken them, that it is not too late to repent. Um, the elderly, right? A lot of them feel that um, nobody loves them. Nobody cares about them. They are they have been forgotten. Um, those in war-torn countries and famine and experiencing famine and drought and things like this, orphans and the widows who do not have a husband anymore or a dad to take care of them, especially with what has been happening um, with the war in Ukraine and Russia and other places of the earth too, where um, where they don't have a dad, where they don't have a husband and they're experiencing things. But through our prayer, brothers and sisters, through moving the heart of the Lord, when we send aid to them, right? Like praying that the Lord would send people to minister, to to go visit the, the elderly who have, who feel forgotten, who feel like nobody cares about them. Right. Um, you know, what I've been doing, um, right now is sewing into you know donating to families um who who are orphans who are widows right taking care of them and brothers and sisters when we do these things right they tend um financially spiritually um to uh physically to the orphans and the widows the the homeless those in jail and prison um, those who are in war-torn countries, those who are elderly, when we do these things, we are actually manifesting and growing the kingdom of Christ. So even though there is darkness is is over the land, is over the earth, and the wickedness is growing, and it will continue to grow stronger, and there's a lot of evil things that are happening to stay focused, right? Even though these things are going on, those wicked things, that those wicked things don't get us down and get us in a negative um, mind frame, even though some of it, a a lot of it is true, 
you know, these negative things that are going on, but to remain positive and to re- our, our mind and our heart to be focused on the kingdom. Because when you take care of the orphan and the widow and the elderly, however you do it financially or spiritually or physically, literally, brothers and sisters, we are commanded as children of God to do these things. And um, so when we do these things, it is actually manifesting Christ. It is manifesting the kingdom of light. It is manifesting um, the glory of Christ in this realm. And that is the power. See, brothers and sisters, sin and and good, um, good and evil, sin and righteousness is it's it's an actual energy. It's a power. And when sin is starting to get greater and greater and more in the earth, it, it will oppress, it will come against, um, and it will try to stifle the kingdom of Christ and righteousness and goodness and holiness. And so the, the way that we battle that is by manifesting, bringing the divine light of our Lord, bringing the divine light of Christ, bringing righteousness and manifesting it, bringing it into this, this physical realm, because that's what we are. We're vessels, brothers and sisters, to glorify the Lord. We're physical vessels in this physical realm to glorify the Lord and to adv- to glorify the Lord and to advance the kingdom of Christ. And so, brothers and sisters, this is what we are commanded to do. And um, I want to encourage you, if you're not doing these things, brothers and sisters, if you're not tending to the orphan and the widow, if you're not... Um, you know, taking care of the elderly. And again, brothers and sisters, you don't, um, yes, you can, you should, if you're able to, and you can go to these people physically, but if you can't, right. Or if you don't know how to ask the Lord to show you a way and, but you can definitely, um, brothers and sisters be moving the heart of the Lord through your prayer right? Through laying your body down as a living sacrifice. Every morning, brothers and sisters, that should be in your heart, in your prayer, that Lord, I lay my body down as a living sacrifice. Paul said, or Peter says, that is our reasonable worship, brothers and sisters. If we are not doing that for others, if we are not laying ourselves down, just as our Lord laid himself down for us, even while we were sinners, if we are not doing that, We are not worshiping the Lord the way that he commanded it in his word. And if you haven't been doing it in that way, then don't feel shame and guilt and condemnation, brothers and sisters, but adjust, recognize your shortcoming and maybe your sin or your error and repent and return to the Lord. That's brothers and sisters. It's not that children of God are um, so are just greater and better than anybody else. But where the children of God are different as opposed to other people is when they recognize when they're convicted and they they read the word and they recognize their sin and their error. They repent in the Hebrew is called teshuva. They return to the Lord. They return to the the old ways of righteousness that um, that our Lord has has had written in his word Um to show us to be a blueprint for us, how to live and to how to worship the Lord and all of these things. So brothers and sisters, we are commanded to do this. And what, what me and, um, and like Lena have been doing is really sewing, um, really financially helping out. And, and when we do those things, brother, see, I got this new job where I'm making a lot more money now, more than I ever have. I'm not saving it up for me to get all of these things. No, I'm, I'm using that money to advance the kingdom because brothers and sisters, what does one do to be made perfect? What did the Lord say? Sell everything that you have and follow Christ. And that's what we're doing. We are giving our all working, laying our bodies down as a living sacrifice in the spirit, in the world at work, right? working so that we can make money to use for others and this is the way this is how the lord commanded us and showed us this is the way to be perfect the lord says be perfect as your father is perfect um 
And so he didn't say that, brothers and sisters, if it was not attainable. And that's something that we should work towards with all of our heart, mind, and strength. So that being said, brothers and sisters, I wanted to encourage you with this. But um, the other thing I wanted to say, brothers and sisters, and I'm sure this isn't the only time that I've said this, and there's many other um servants and prophet true servants and prophets true children of god of the lord um that have said this and brothers and sisters right now we are in the time that during this time while biden is president see because after biden is is taken out of office after his horn which is his power breaks which is what is prophesied i'm going to show you these scriptures is what we are looking at is the coming is the revealing of the son of perdition and the removal of the restrainer and brothers and sisters i will tell you when the restrainer is removed it is going to be the most terrible disgusting terrible times that have ever happened in all of the creation of the world and what we are doing now brothers and sisters the things that we are going through is preparing us for that time and and so brothers and sisters i will tell you and in, in truth that there is going to be we've already been experiencing seeing all around us the spiritual invasion of people's temples and these evil spirits that are inhabiting people's temples and influencing them to do more and more and more evil. And but brothers and sisters, remember that there is going to be a literal invasion. There is going to be an invasion. And I don't know exactly if it's going to be of Russia or China or China and Russia or probably the UN under the under the um, banner of peace, as they say, um, which we know is a false peace because they're going to destroy many um, saints, many people of God. But there is going to be a literal invasion of this country and they're going to come here and and that there is going to be the rule and the reign of the son of perdition. And brothers and sisters, there's a lot of people there's a lot of different beliefs that people say that um, people of God are going to be here, aren't going to be here, so on and so forth. But brothers and sisters, what will happen? What is written will happen. And when it talks about the saints and God's people um, um, being here through um, through the time of the son of perdition, um, brothers and sisters, if you are confused about this, um, take these things to the Lord. Really take these things to the Lord, because we are going to go through a time um, of purging and trial. But right now we are getting ready, brothers and sisters. We're getting ready for that last short space of the enemy to, so And what we're going through, all the hardships and trials and tribulations and sufferings that we're going through every day is going to is preparing us for the most wicked time when the, when the son of perdition will be ruling and reigning for his short period of time. So I'm going to show you something, brothers and sisters, and I've talked about this before, but I feel led to do this again. So in Daniel 8, brothers and sisters, it talks about the two-horned ram and the single-horned goat. That two-horned ram was the king, the kings of Media and Persia, and that spirit was what Trump was housing, okay, um, Cyrus. And that single-horned goat, that single-horned goat that beat the two-horned ram in Daniel chapter 8, that single horned goat was Biden and the spirit that empowers Biden. But remember, brothers and sisters, that the goat, okay, the single horned goat, his 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 horn, which is Biden and his administration and the spirit that invigorates them to do what they do, his horn is going to break soon. And I don't know if it's going to be at the 2024 midterm elections. I know that 2024, there is going to be a great sign of the solar great. So sol the other great solar American eclipse is going to happen then. And um, that 
Biden's power, his horn is going to break. And when that happens, brothers and sisters, there's four prominent horns and they're going to take that single horn's place and they're going to grow up to the four winds of heaven. Now, brothers and sisters, where this four winds of heaven are, are these vaults in the heavens that 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 come from the heavens and come into the earth. It's where wind and these things um, come into the earth where they come into the earth at but it's also talking about it as you read this they're going to make war um against the host of heaven okay they're the this these four horns um they're going to make war against the holy heavenly angels and archangels and when it talks about um um Archangel Michael dra grabbing a hold of that dragon and binding him for a thousand years. That's when the consummation of that that battle is going to happen. But right now, there's a thing going on, brothers and sisters, where Michael, he is the prince of the heavenly armies. He uh, They are battling against the dragon and his evil angels. And so... Um, hold on just a second. So they're going to take away the daily sacrifice and his sanctuary is going to be thrown down, brothers and sisters. That's the time we're about to be going into. But right now, before Biden gets out of power and the son of perdition comes in because he is the the the. The son of perdition is going to come in when that single horn from the ram breaks. Okay. And um, we have time right now while Biden is in power, while he's doing and fulfilling the things that he's going to fulfill. We have time to be able to advance the king, to grow the kingdom of Christ, to sow in the spirit right? To do what the Lord has commanded us to, to live the way that he has commanded us in his word before these things happen. And I want to show you something, brothers and sisters. It says, because of rebellion, the Lord's people, the daily sacrifice were given over to it. So as more and more the population of people get inhabited with evil spirits and evil powers and darkness, what they're doing is they're becoming more evil and they are, as they do more evil deeds and evil actions, and they're what they're doing is they're manifesting a dark force. When you do something, being made in God's image and likeness, when you glorify God and do righteousness and holy th and, and good things, it manifests, it manifests the kingdom of Christ. It glorifies God and it has an effect on our physical realm. But the same thing with sin and rebellion, because there's so many people, brothers and sisters, right? Cre doing evil and rebellion, right? The, and, and that evil is being manifested in the earth. So what is going to happen? It is written in the word of the Lord. Um, that they're going to prosper and they're going to throw truth to the ground. But brothers and sisters, the things that we go through now and how the Lord is preparing us is going to prepare us to endure to the very end. That's why the Lord said, can you endure to the very end? Can you endure to the very end? And brothers and sisters, by God's grace, by his spirit, by trusting the process and the things he is allowing to happen to you, you can endure if you believe, if you have faith. But if you do not store up those things that need to be stored, right? Seven years of plenty, seven years of famine right? There's five wise virgins, five foolish. The, there's groups of people that are storing up in the spiritual realm. They're storing up their prayers. They're storing up oil, which is going to in turn help them when this most wicked time is coming, is going to help them endure and get through that time, okay? All glory be to God. Um, but brothers and sisters, when it talks about when Daniel was asking the angel, um, you know, how long is this going to be? And he said, 
it says, he said to me, it will take 2,300 evenings. Okay, that's a, a, around seven years, brothers and sisters. Okay, and it says, then the sanctuary will be reconsecrated. It ta it's talking about this time, brothers and sisters, of this seven years is cleansing and purifying. And it's, it's, it's a time where all the evil and bad and things that we've adopted, that we were born into, are being purged and cleansed out of us. And brothers and sisters, purging and cleansing is done by fire. It's, it, it's, it's done by tribulation and going through things that are not easy but there is a time where the lord where um it is written um where um this is the time where we are being purged that the true children of god are being purged and cleansed and refined from these things so that we can enter into the kingdom because remember brothers and sisters remember it says in Daniel 7, as I watched, the horn was waging war against the saints and prevailing against them. That's the time we're going into soon. Until the Ancient of Days arrive, that's the Lord of hosts, the King of kings and Lord of lords, and pronounce judgment in favor of the saints of the Most High. And the time came for them to possess the kingdom. Because remember, brothers and sisters, it says the meek will inherit the earth. I know that it also says, brothers and sisters, that the Lord will take us to a place where we will be with him always. But brothers and sisters, what people don't understand is that you have a spirit and a soul that goes into different places while your physical body still still um, is in the earth. So you can get raptured or taken into these higher heavenly places in your body will still be on the physical earth. Brothers and sisters, the Lord created mankind to inherit the earth, to rule, to have dominion over all of the physical realm. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Is a This physical realm is a reflection of how things are in the heavens. And just as the Lord has dominion in the heavens, mankind, Adam, true Adam, the renewed, the restored Adam, has dominion and rule over the physical realm. But right now, we are going through a time of tribute where, where all of the things, the impurities in us are being rooted out and refined. And that is the purpose of the son of perdition and, and these evil forces is it's refining, it's purging us, it's, it's, it's making us go through things that are very hard. But remember, brothers and sisters, you have an altar inside of your heart. You have an altar, and as you go through these groanings and trials and tribulations and sufferings, those are, when you do that out of pure love and faith in your heart, that becomes a pleasing and acceptable aroma unto the Lord. That is the offerings. See, we don't sacrifice animals anymore. The altar is in us and we lay ourselves down. And as we go through these trials and tribulations, those are offerings unto the Lord. And eventually, brothers and sisters, these things that God's people are going through is going to move the heart of the Lord into coming to earth to, 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 to exacting vengeance and punishment upon the wicked. And he's going to root out. He's going to burn up the son of perdition and burn up the evil in this world soon. All glory be to God. So I wanted to share this with you, brothers and sisters. God bless each and every one of you. And you know what? It's it's actually, um, you know, it says when a man prophesies with his hat on, and I didn't, I just now um, saw this and, and recognize that I was wearing a hat, but I worship the Lord and Lord and King of Kings. And it says, whether I understand it, whether I agree with it in my carnal nature or not, it doesn't matter. The Lord said, whoever prophesies with his head covered is dishon is, is being a dishonor. So, um, I repent. Um, I, I ask forgiveness from my Lord in the name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua Hamashiach. Um, because I didn't do this with intention, right? And these are the things, brothers and sisters, that God's people go through. See, that I recognize this. I don't let shame and guilt and condemnation come over me, but I acknowledge my sin and my error, 
of doing that. And next time I'll do it better. And that's what the Lord wants to see that we repent and turn to him with all of our heart, mind and strength. So that was, that was, um, you know, something that I am repenting uh, and turning away from. And next time I do something like that in these prophecies, um, I'll remember not to have my head covered. Um, so glory be to God, brothers and sisters, all glory, praise, blessing and majesty be to the Lord and Lord of King of Kings. All glory and praise and blessing and majesty be to the Father, Son and Holy Spirit forever and ever and ever. Amen. Love you, brothers and sisters.